Jenny with On Fire Fit and welcome to another episode of High Heel Hallelujah. And today I am talking about why you should never give up hope. But first, let's look at the shoes. Okay, here is the shoe of the day. It is a classic pump and I may have worn these before, I'm not sure, but I don't wear nylons with open toe shoes, so I only have a couple of choices. The weather has gotten very cool, so I can finally wear some things that warm up my legs, but then I am limited on the shoes that I would wear. So these are the shoe of the day. I am going to look and you can tell me how in the world you pronounce that. I do not know. But that is, <laughs> that's the shoe of the day. My husband bought them for me, of course. And I am very grateful. So, all right, we'll see you in a sec. So I was thinking about this. I was spending some time reading in the Bible and I've had some pretty interesting things happening lately that remind me never to give up hope. But also, it is all based on the fact that I have faith in a God whose character does not change. And a lot of what happens in our life might not be expected. It might be things that we don't quite understand. But the thing that keeps me going, the thing that keeps you going, is when you realize that God's character doesn't change. He is always good. He is always loving. So even if we live in a world filled with sins, filled with people making dumb choices, bad mistakes, all of these things, we know that ultimately God can turn anything for good. I have a couple of examples that have come up recently and I'll just talk about one of them really quick. But my daughter, who is 16, has been in the Nutcracker performance for our dance studio for most of her life. And she has really dedicated her life to dance and it has been something that is a big passion of hers for a long time. She injured herself and uh, sprained her foot, but anybody that knows about injuries, sometimes a sprain is as bad or worse than a break and it just seems like it takes forever to get over. And so it's been a bit frustrating because she's used to doing a lot and being really active, but she has been off of it in a boot, on a scooter, unable to do all of her normal stuff. And yet she's maintained a great attitude. She has continued to um, dive into her schoolwork, which she has a lot this year. But the interesting thing is she's in a class called Speech and Debate, and she's also in the club. And it is not an area that is um, comfortable for her. She is not the type of person that loves to get up in front of people. But she also knew that this was something that she really should do uh, for her future, the various things that she has in mind for what she would like to do with her life. And so she knew that she needed to, but it isn't something that she would naturally choose to do. And this past weekend, she had not, because, because she didn't have dance practice, or they had practice, but she couldn't go because of her foot, she ended up going to a speech and debate tournament and this was her first opportunity to do this and while she was there it became very clear that this is an area that she has a gift and yet she would never have dreamed of it because she's always been afraid of that sort of thing so despite her fear she went ahead and did it and i had uh, parents from the opposing team telling me that she's phenomenal. Of course, I'm her mother, so it's a little harder for me to have a unbiased opinion because I think she's awesome anyway. But the point was that had she not had this injury, I don't know that she would have been in this place at this time, finding out an area that she's gifted that she can use in the future. 
And because she has embraced this challenge and allowed God to redirect what was bad into something good, she has started to see a lot of different things open up for her in her life. Areas where she potentially could get scholarships, areas that she can develop um, her talent in a different way. And so, yes, I don't believe God caused that to happen to her, but look how he opened some doors and uh, provided some opportunities that she wouldn't normally have had. And she recognizes that, and so that was really cool. And then on top of it, while we were at this tournament, we found out that one of the boys who she was competing against also goes to a Christian school, but he is paying for his own school tuition by working two jobs in order to go to that school. And it really, like, I just got chills again thinking about it. It really reminds us and humbles us that this is so precious, what we have in this life. The things that she gets to go to, my daughter gets to go to a Christian school, and yet she saw that it is so much value to somebody else that he works two jobs in order to make that happen. It really impacted her and she really wants to do something to help him. And I thought if we hadn't been at this speech tournament, would she have realized how much it's important that she is where she is and have such a, a compassionate heart towards somebody else. And so I was just thanking God for the blessing of that and just reminding myself that sometimes we don't understand what we're going through or what the situation is that we're dealing with, but we can rely on the fact that God's character is always good. He always loves us and he can make good out of bad situations. And because of that, we have an eternal hope. And so I encourage you that if you aren't sure what's going on in your life or what is happening, maybe you're under a lot of stress or maybe there's a lot of um, hopelessness in your life, that you would cling to the only thing that really is truly hope-filled. And that is that God created you. He created you in his image. He loves you more than anything. You are the apple of his eye. He smiles on you, shines on you, and he has gifted you. And that you have hope because he sent his son so that you would know how much you are loved because he wants you to be with him forever. And so his son paid the price for all the mistakes you made, all the mistakes I made, and will make even in the future so that we get to be with him eternally. And so we have that hope. All the things that we go through in this life are minuscule in the grand scheme of things. Even though they feel huge at times, they are still really small in the face of eternity. And so I try to look at those things as distractions and push them aside, kick them aside, and on I go on the mission that God gave me. And so I hope that you're filled with hope today, and I hope that you're living your life on fire.